Welcome along to Tume Stadium. It's intermediate football final day and what an occasion we have. Welcome on in everybody, wherever you're watching. It's live stream coverage of Dunmore McHales against Kilconley in an eagerly anticipated Galway intermediate football final. Perfect timing as we watch the referee Kieran Quinn from the Father Griffin's Era Oak Club in the middle of the field conduct the toss of the coin with both the Demore McHales and Kilconley captains. Matthew Reddington wearing his white training top on the left for Demore McHales. That will be discarded pretty soon. And we'll see his usual green outfit and Conor Marsden for Kilconley. What a match and what a crowd. It's absolutely packed in the stands here in Tume Stadium for what is effectively a derby contest between two parishes separated only by a strip in the middle called Milltown. So what better commentary team than to have two neutral heads from Milltown on duty. My name is Ollie Turner and I'm delighted to have Jermud Blake with us as well, the former Galway and Milltown midfielder, who, like everybody else, Jermud, is really looking forward to this game. Yeah, really looking forward to it. Um, you know, there are two, these two te teams were in the group stages of the intermediate um, and uh, Dunmore came out on top. But uh, I think it's going to be a different uh, scenario today. Uh, Kilconley look very fit, they look very organised out there. And Kilconley have pedigree, they have played uh, senior football. A lot of these guys have played senior football, which Dunmore haven't. It's, they'll, have, they'll probably have the more experience. So, you know, this could go either way and it's, it's hard to know who to shout for or not shout for as a Milton man. And yet, all of the talk coming into this is that Dunmore are firm favourites. Should we not be talking about this game as a real 50-50? Yeah, I think so. But uh, And it'll, it'll depend on the, the start. I think for Kilconley, Kilconley will be hoping to stay in, stay in this game until the last 10 minutes and hope you know there might be you know consensus out there that if, if you stick with Dunmore near the end, you might have a chance. So I think Dunmore will probably come out of the blocks quickly and get ahead like they did in down in Milltown in the group stages. So, you know, I, I see there that Dunmore have made a, uh, are bringing in a few uh, players and they have... Um, Thomas Gleeson back so he's a big player for Dunmore so that's going to change the dynamic of Conor Gleeson's, Conor Gleeson's uh, kickouts and all that so well without further ado let's have a look at both lineups and we're going to start with a look at that Kilconley team and was there a better atmosphere anywhere in Galway club championship action this year than Kilconley's incredible victory over Glenamaddy in the quarterfinals where two men down with two minutes to go, they somehow clawed out the couple of scores that took the game to extra time, and the rest is history as Kilconley went on to be victorious. Tommy Mannion has been in brilliant form in goals and arguably could well be playing his way onto the intermediate team of the year. JP Byrne had a fine outing at fullback against the Aran Islands when Kilconley came from behind to win that semi final. A strong half back line, including Owen Daly and Barry Concannon flanking Conor O'Neill. But at midfield, County star Niall Daly will be looking for plenty of help from the brilliant Daniel Concannon. If they get a stranglehold in that sector, it could be pivotal. But up front, it's where Kilconley have all the aces. The free-scoring David Prendergast and Paul Mannion have been shooting the lights out this season. If they do damage today, the cup could well be Kilconley's. Looking at Demore McHales, who were on most people's shortlist to win the Intermediate Championship from the very outset. They've got county goalkeeper Conor Gleeson between the sticks. Declan Radigan very impressive in their semi-final victory over Curra Finn. He's flanked by Colin Lyons and, Colin Co and also on the other side, uh, Danny Ford. Um, of course, Conor Mitchell will be at centre-back wearing number nine. But at midfield, the aforementioned Thomas Gleeson and Martin Cleary, who for most people has been Demore's most consistent performer in this year's championship. They will have a big bearing on this game. Like Kilconley though, Dunmore have some big hitters up front. And what a full forward line that is. Shane McGrath, Pori Coslow and Jake Slattery. On their day, Young McGrath and Slattery could well be match winners. But Dunmore will be looking to their captain, Matthew Reddington, at centre forward as perhaps being the difference between these two teams. Our match referee in the centre of the field is Kieran Quinn. Big day for him out as well. But Jerma, the conditions are the biggest talking point here. It's just a pity that so many of these big games at this time of year seem to be decided in conditions that are almost like turning this game into a lottery. There is a big wind blowing down the field. Yeah, and you know it's, it's a tough one for the likes of Kilconley. What do they do? Do they sit back and uh, play against the breeze and start, try and stay the game, or do they take it to um, Dunmore? I see their Martin Newell is, is named at full forward for Kilconley. I'd be very surprised if he stays there. I think he's going to play as a sweeper and drop back in front of the formidable forward line that uh, Dunmore have. So it's going to be very tight back there. Of course, both teams have changed jerseys because of the clash between the green of Dunmore and the green and red of Kilconley. So we will have Dunmore in blue and white and Kilconley in the all-blacks. 
or Ron Nevian before the start of the intermediate final. The roars go up. It's as traditional as anything in Irish life. The last strains of our on Naveen drowned out by shouts of come on Kilconley, come on Dunmore. And all is in readiness. Dunmore McHales in their change strip of black jerseys, black shorts with a green trim. Kilconley with the white jerseys and the blue shorts. If they needed a set of jerseys, they wouldn't have to go too far if they're the colours of Carlos Strand, their other neighbouring parish. But this is going to be some game. Already we could see down to our left-hand side, Dunmore are pushing right in. And the game is underway, the intermediate final. And early on, it's Dunmore McHales who win the throw-in. Ball taken and touched down in the centre of the field as Martin Cleary tries to drive forward and get possession into the inside line. All pushing forward is Dunmore McHales. Is that a little tip on the ground? It is. The Conley man was going down on it. Boot went in, free out, good work by Niall Mullen, but a real intent from Dunmore at the start, and the pressure will be on. They've got the advantage of the elements. Yeah, they, they really knew, uh, need to start well now with this breeze. Kilconley, I would presume, will sit guys back and try and keep the score down and stay in this game to the second half. Kilconley will be slowing it down and playing keep ball. As in this instance, Barry Concannon will try and punt this ball forward. Really difficult conditions, though. Ball well won over there by Sean Murray, but he passes the ball off to Dylan Brady who drops it and now Kilconley on the counter-attack every mistake will be punished Kilconley driving forward that one is going to tail out to the left-hand side and isn't even going to go wide will be kept in play by Conor Gleeson really difficult conditions Gleeson with the blue jersey to distinguish himself from his outfield teammates Dunmore with Declan Rattigan strong running full-back drives up the field and gives it off in turn to Danny Ford into the centre good work Dunmore McHale's busy with Shane McGrath He's fouled. Referee says that will be a free. McGrath operating out around the middle of the field. And with this strong wind advantage, one wonders, are Dunmore missing a trick by not having McGrath closer to goal? Yeah, I think uh, he, he seems to be playing out around the middle, so it's hard to know what position how Dunmore are playing. The, I think, was it um, a Reddington starting midfield with Shane McGrath for the throw-in? But uh, we'll see how, when it settles down where they'll end up. Well, Shane McGrath always out for the throw-in and won it as well. But Dunmore now, can they get the first score of this county final? Nice ball to the inside line. Lovely little play by Costello. Back it goes. Shot coming from distance. Should be the opening score and is. Brilliant point. Up and over the bar, Dunmore McHale's off the mark, but with such a strong wind, they'll be anxious to get as many points on the board as they possibly can. And that ball kicked over the bar. Brendan Carr landing the first score of this intermediate final. And young Carr, who had a great championship with Dunmore McHale's last year, until, I suppose, for all of Dunmore, that forgettable second half against Letcher Moore. And that's been their motivation, hasn't it, Jim, at all year? Yeah, it has. And I'm sure there's a lot of pressure as well with the guys after being there, thereabouts for a few years now. So that'll settle them down. A nice score there by, by, by Brendan Kerr. But they need a few more because they have a young team and they probably just need to settle into this game. Great catch by Colin Lyons. He took the mark. And Dunmore are building up ahead of steam here in the early stages of this intermediate football championship, playing it very tight out on the middle of the field. But Martin Cleary is really getting a new lease of life this year for Demore McHales at midfield. Lovely ball, kicked down to Costello. Can't grab it though, through his hands. And it's easily won by the Kilconley fullback JP Byrne, who's no mean player either. He's been put under pressure. Dunmore really scrambling hard. Was that touched on the ground? It was. Again, good pressure by Dunmore. And I suppose the sign of any good team, Jeremy, they're only as good as the work rate of your full forward line and Dumore showed it there. Yeah, absolutely. Unfortunate there for Kilconley to, 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 for a free to be awarded in a wet day. It was a bit uh, you know, tough, tough on the, the back coming out of the ball. I don't know who it was. But um, yeah, Dumore went long there with the ball into, into Porrick Castello, who, who's a brilliant player. But you'd wonder, is, are you better off to go through the hands in a wet day? A long ball like that, a ball spill. But they put high pressure on and turned over the ball. So uh, great work by them. Ball kicked up and over the bar. No problems. Porrick Castello left or right. What a talent he is. 
And that's two points on the board for Dunmore, and they'll be very happy with their start. They will, yeah. And we'll just uh, interesting to see now kick out strategies. Both goalkeepers like to go along with their kick outs. So there's been kind of uh, changes with, with the Dunmore midfield. Now, this one has gone short out of the corner, but um, at the Tommy Man usually likes to go. Yeah, it's a really go high hand pass, but it's worked out okay for Owen Daly, who took that hand pass and won a free. Tommy Mannion got great distance on the previous kickout, so they do have that long ball option, even if it is into the elements. And Conley will be pretty happy to just play keep ball and let Damore work hard. Coming up along the side, and great work on the right hand touchdown, and again a hefty shoulder. Damore really pumped up for this one, and none more so than Sean Murray, a little bit too pumped up. Referee just having a little word just to calm things down there. But uh, again, Damore right up for this one. Absolutely. Paul Manny went down along the sideline. He's a big, strong guy, you know, playing unbelievably well. But uh, Damore did very well to turn him over. Nice intricate play from Damore from that short sideline ball. And Martin Cleary manages to open things up and finds Luke Murray driving forward. Lovely ball again into Costo. Can he grab it at this time of asking? He can't, but he does enough. I mean, it's hard to be critical, Jim. The conditions are shocking. Yeah, it's a very tough ball for a forward to win like that uh, long ball w w with the way that it's just missing all the time. But uh, they're through here again, Dunmore. McGrath does well. Out it goes. That's a poor effort, though. Out to the right-hand side. Good chance for Dunmore, but that one was snatched at by Jake Slattery. And Dunmore can't really afford yeah. wides like that. Yeah, Kilconley are, are, are dropping a lot of men back. They're keeping it nice and tight. Now they're, they're coming out the field for the kick-out, but they, I think they had 14 men inside the 45 at that stage, so that's the kind of game plan they're going to play in the first half. Kick-out again from Mannion. Got a great boot on him. Out toward the middle of the field. Let's see where this breaks. Is that a pullback? It should be. No, referee says it was a dive. They're more not happy. But in fairness to Kieran Quinn, he was right there. And uh, wasn't happy to give the free. So can Conley drive forward with Mannion soloing into the heart of the Dunmore defence. No foul, says the referee. He's happy to let things go here, which might be good for the spectators. And by golly, are there plenty of spectators here in Chum Stadium for this intermediate football final. A huge crowd as can Conley drive forward. Chance of a shot dropping in around the house. Real opportunity flicked out to the left-hand side and wide. And just for a moment, time stood still as that effort from Barry Concannon dropped short. And what a chance in there. For David Prendergast, if he had realised it, he had time to just try and claw that one out of the sky, but missed it. Yeah, Barry Kincannon was going for a shot, and it just just dropped short. But uh, David Prendergast, you know, a guy that was on form, if he just got one touch, that was in the back of the net. Wonderful work here. A chance now for Jake Slattery off the right. This should be a score, but he again has fluffed his lines, and that one is out to the right and side and wide. Great chance, a massive kick out from Gleason all the way down inside the Kilconley 45. Yeah, that's probably the danger for Kilconley. When they carry the ball forward, they lead themselves as balls at the back and Demore long ball in. And probably Jake Satter would be disappointed with that because you know he, there was, it was two on two and they probably should have got a score. Well, maybe even taking it on. That's a couple of bad wides for Dunmore in the last two minutes and all of that just stalls their momentum. They've got the only two points on the board, 2 0 to Dunmore, but that's not nearly enough. And I suppose looking at the kind of scoring rate that you'd want. This is probably a seven, eight points win, but Kilconley are just the happier of the two with the way the last five minutes have gone. Dunmore leading by two points, no score. But wonderful work by Matthew Reddington. Down the line, left-hand touchline. Brilliant work, basketball from Reddington. Push to the ground and a free for Dunmore. Inspirational work from the Dunmore captain and he gets on with it quickly because he sees Danny Ford in plenty of space. Opportunity again for Dunmore. Nice little flick ball back inside. Danny Ford take it to the ground, free aim. And Demore McHales have engineered another opportunity, but that was made and manufactured in Nocatee by Reddington. Yeah, brilliant by Reddington there, but it's just interesting. He tried to hop the ball three times and the ball wouldn't come up. It just shows that the, the ground is wet and the ball won't bounce really uh, in, in that surface. But, um, you know, unfortunate there, Daniel Concannon, he just left the leg in and gave an easy free to Kilcannon or to Demore. Costello is going to take it. Porrick has kicked one off the left. This is going to be off the right, outside the D. Porrick Costello looking to try and guide this one over the bar. And he's out to the right hand side and wide. Is it going to be another horror day at the office for Dunmore McHales with the free taking? Because they saw this 12 months ago, how it cost them a county final. Yeah, and I suppose that would probably playing in Porrick's head and he's taking that free. You know, he'd be just hoping for the next one that it's in closer to goal, but uh, probably should have nailed that one. But interesting, uh, Kilconley are, are going to Niall Daly with the kickouts, and I think uh, Dunmore know this, so we'll see will they change it up. Pretty congested centre third between the Demore 65 and the Kilconley 45 where all these kickouts are going to be landing. There's Anthony up to 12 players, but that's a brilliant catch in the centre field by Prendergast. David gets on with it, flicks it inside. Lovely touch 
by Conor Marsden. Took him a couple of opportunities to get the ball in the hand, but did well. Now driving forward to Conley again, but such pressure from Dunmore McHale. Shane McGrath in that instance turning the ball over from Barry Concannon. A great work from Dunmore. They just need an end product to all of this great work. And they've had a couple of bad misses. Ooh. McGrath's going through. This is something else. Shane McGrath, hand pass inside. Opportunity, brilliant block. Was it a foot block? No. Great defending. Slid in there and a ball then pushing the back. And it'll be a free out for Kilconley. What a wonderful piece of defending. Flung his body in there just to make a last ditch tackle. Yeah, a brilliant play by Shane McGrath. Though. What athleticism. He, you know, he, he dispossessed the ball out, out around the middle and, t- and went on. Got the, got the return pass and went straight in for goal. With Dumore very, very unlucky not to get a score there. Yeah, the eventual shot from Jake Slattery was smothered. And one wonders whether or not sallying through was a better bet for Shane McGrath to have his own shot or maybe tap it over the bar. But Dunmore haven't added to their two points and that will be of big concern. The stopwatch is ticking on and it might be close to 10 minutes but only two points to show for their efforts. Reddington driving forward now. Dunmore badly need a score. Reddington passes up the opportunity. They're going for goal here, Dunmore. And why? Reddington or Dunmore McHales don't tap these chances over the bar. They could rue all these misses. Yeah, I think the doubts are coming into Dunmore. They're, they're trying to make sure their scores when they just need to tap the ball, keep the, the score and ticking over. Uh, Matthew Reddington, absolutely brilliant play. It all opened up from. I think he should have just tapped that ball over the bar b- back himself. He just wor- tried to work at that one extra pass and uh, went out wide. But uh, disappointed from Dunmore. And the, you can see the confidence slightly draining from them and, and the confidence boosting from Kilcanley. The psychology of this match is incredible. There's no doubt Dunmore have been completely dominating in this opening quarter. But two points seems a paltry return for the territorial advantage and the huge wind that's out here. Ball breaks in the middle of the field. Again, it's Dunmore onto the breaking ball. And again, it's a free. Is Costa going to come out and kick this one or is Martin Cleary going to get on with it quickly? Again, referee says injury to, to Conley Pierce, who's going to hold things up. Looks like Keen Davin is the man down on the ground. Keen is getting a a little bit of running repairs. Opportunity as well for a swig of the bottle for Dylan Brady. And Damore just need to calm things down. There's been a little bit of snatchiness about a few of the opportunities they've had. There has. And the, because the surface is so wet, uh, there's been a lot of turnover so, uh, on both sides. But uh, I think Damore just need to settle down. They've only got two points with this Gale Forest breeze. So they, you know, they, need, they need to up that tally. A lot of people listening into this match, both at home and abroad. And one man up in Nace, County Kildare, that a lot of our listeners will know and know well, is go with three in a row legend, Seamus Layden. Seamus, hope you're keeping well and enjoying the commentary. Your Damore McHale's lads are leading by two points to no score, but it should be a lot more. And Kilconley will be happy right now that they have survived a bit of an early onslaught and have only conceded two points. Dunmore playing with a really strong wind in Tume Stadium that's blowing straight into the town goal, but a great goal opportunity missed. Three bad wides, and now Martin Cleary coming forward, trying to rectify that. Is he fouled? No. Dunmore now almost reluctant to take the shot. There's a little bit of fear coming into it. Let's see who can break the deadlock. Dylan Brady in possession for Dunmore. He's on the Kilconley 45, drops the shoulder. Out it goes towards Danny Ford. Ford goes back to Declan Radigan. Is he going to be the one to break the stranglehold that Kilconley have? on Dunmore at the moment. Everybody back for Kilconley. All of their players are inside their own half of the field. Colin Lyons soloing, but again missing the ball and Dunmore just don't seem like they know what they're doing at the moment. There's a lot of going round in circles. No end product. Rattigan to Reddington to Cleary. Now there should be a little bit of a break. Cleary trying to break through the tackle. Is he fouled? Referee says play on. He's happy that there's going to have to be a certain amount of contact. Rattigan into the tackle. Is he fouled? Referee says, yeah, oh, touched on the ground. Free out to Kilconley. All of these are major psychological wins for Kilconley as they win these mini battles. Yeah, I, I, Dumore just need to create the overlap when they're going forward. But it's interesting, the ball is so wet that any contact with the person in possession uh, would attack along the ball. The ball seems to be spilling. So uh, Kilconley are growing in confidence. You can see them here now. There's a lot of Dumore people that aren't at this game because they're down in Kerry. And Dingle at the wedding of Mary Coleman from Dunmore and Tom Costello from Kinvara. Congratulations to you, Mary and Tom, and to, to all the Colemans and all the family and relations who are down there. I believe in Paddy O'Shea's pub in Ventry enjoying the match at the moment. Well, Paddy O'Shea would have loved this sort of a game, I can tell you that. Two points to the Mormon Kales, no score, Kilconley. 
That's not the story of the game though, as we reach towards the end of the first quarter. It's the amount of chances that Dunmore have missed and whether or not that will come back to haunt them. To Conley in possession now. Chance for Michael Murphy to get something started. Missing their semi-final win over the Aran Islands. Murphy back is a huge addition to the JFC-sponsored Kilconley lads. Wearing the change strip of white jerseys and blue shorts. Dunmore anxious not to foul. Again, both defences absolutely in tip-top shape. Dunmore again putting pressure on. High tackle from Declan Radigan. Just when it looked like Dunmore had got on top. And Kilconley engineered the free. A foul it certainly was. Yeah, it definitely was. But uh, Paul managed it very well. And Kilconley, they, they kept that ball. They had lost it and they kept playing. And uh, Kilconley have a free now. It'll be interesting to see with Dunmore missing a couple of frees down this side. Can Kilconley capitalise and nail all their frees? Because I think, as you can see, it's going to be a low-scoring game. So a free taker or, some, or someone that can kick 45s will be huge in this game yet. No question. It's going to have a huge bearing. But this would be a massive score for Kilconley. If they're to get this over the bar, well... Coming up on 14 minutes gone. If Dunmore are only 2-1 up, you'd have to say Kilconley for me go favourites. Yeah, they probably will. The only thing is, though, Kilcon or Dunmore have quick forwards, so they might play better against the Breeze because Kilconley will have to come out and play in the second half, so it might free up a bit of space inside. A lot of people talking about the value on a draw today as well. 8-all, 9-all. It's got that feel to it, doesn't it? It does, yeah, and you, know, you, you wouldn't uh, bet against it now at this stage. We could be playing back this video in a few minutes' time saying, why didn't we? But here's an opportunity for Kilconley to get off the mark. What a big moment this is for Paul Mannion. Any score into this wind is worth its weight in gold. Mannion taking his time. He's going to have to aim this one way right. Does. Brilliant contact. Oh, it's an absolutely majestic kick from Paul Mannion. You've got to be here in Tume Stadium to understand how good a kick that is. Yeah, brilliant score, but although it, it's, it would look like it suited a left-footed uh, kick, it probably suited a right foot the way the breeze was. You could you know, put it out right and it, it pulled back in, so he judged it really well and a brilliant boost for Kilconley there. Two points to one. Now Damore find themselves under real pressure. And Kilconley have got their tails up. I'm sure if you're a Kilconley player or supporter... You'd look back to their victory over Glenham Addy in the quarter-final and the way they came back against the Aran Islands. And you know that Kilconley don't do adversity. Whatever situation they're in, there's a real character about this bunch. There is, yeah. But I think for Dunmore, against, against this brief, they should probably try and push up on Kilconley and turn them over up top. Well, Kilconley now are counter-attacking and doing really well to get that ball inside. Opportunity for Michael Murphy. Goes to ground, gets the free. Again, in the pretty much exact same spot where Mannion kicked the last one. Dunmore have again just left a hand in when they didn't need to and an opportunity for Mannion to level it up. Yeah, Michael Murphy showed all his experience there. He's, you know, he's playing for years for Kilconley. I think he's carrying an injury into the game but uh, he just le uh, leaned in there and, and drew the free. Uh, it was a pretty soft one really, kind of uh, you know, an experience from Dunmore to give that free away but uh, this is a difficult free though. The angle is a bit tighter for Paul Manny, he'll have to bring it right out and, and hope the, he, it doesn't pull back in too much. Colin Lyons, the man penalised for the last foul. Mannion, though, I think he's a couple of yards to the right of where he was. This is a lot more difficult because it's a much narrower angle for which to gauge the breeze. So this one would be an even better kick. Mannion drops it up, though. It's now pulled across and to the left and wide. That was the danger. It was just that little bit more of an angle and it remains two points to one to Dunmore. Yeah, and it was a bit close as well, so it, he didn't have the distance to put it out and let it pull back in, so it, he near, he had a narrower angle, so an un, un, unlucky free there, but uh, might give a bit of a boost to Dunmore because they need it out right this moment in time. The last 12 minutes of this half plus stoppage time will have a big bearing on how the second half will play out, but Dunmore will be really disappointed that they've only two points to show for all their efforts. And uh, again, referees having to blow the whistle on a stray boot going in there as one of the Demore men going down on the ball. Earlier on today, of course, big game in Pierce Stadium where Clifton were crowned junior football champions. Great win over Athenry, 3-12 to 111. Clifton march on to the Connacht Championship Series. Who will be playing St. Melosh from Sligo, though, in the intermediate Connacht quarterfinal? That will be decided by the winner today, if indeed there is a winner today. Damore McHales were the first Galway team to play in the Connacht Intermediate Club Football Championship back in 2004. That was an unsuccessful odyssey. 
And of course, Kilconley played in the championship in 2011. It's the last time they won the intermediate after their victory over Rukhtar Aradate. Looked like a push in the back there. Referees is play on. No fouls as Kieran Crane and Damore thinking about winning a free. And that ball is going to go out over the sideline, the line ball to Kilconley. Again, referee is happy to let certain things go. There's a few marginal ones where you wonder would he give a free but uh, the players at this stage have got to know his style and how he's refereeing it. Yeah in general Kieran Quinn lets the game flow, he doesn't pull for 50-50 for, uh, free so you know you can just see Dunmore are, are lacking in confidence now they probably need a few leaders to grab a ball and settle them down and get a free kick or something because they're, they're, they're hanging on a bit here Opportunity now for Kid Connolly, Marinson plays the ball through Prendergast is in on goal, David Prendergast chance wide! Out to the left hand side, what a moment that was. The game in his hands. If could Conley get a goal there, Jermyn, my God, Demore in big trouble. Yeah, and Prindigas has been in such scintillating form, you would have backed him to score that goal, but I suppose the size of Conor Gleeson when he came out probably put him off slightly and he pulled that to the left hand side, but a big letter for Demore if they don't get going here, the game could go by them. Is that the bit of energy though Demore McHale's needed? That let off could well inspire them to more effort. There could be a four-point swing here if Demore score in the next attack. Into Costello on the 45, jinking left and right, but going the wrong direction. Back to Cleary. Costello way out from goal now. Back to Martin Cleary. Is he going to have a pop at the post? He should, but he decided not to take the shot. Pops it inside. Is Reddington going to go off the left? He is, and that's out to the right-hand side and wide. Again, all of this is a combination of all of the things that have gone before it for Demore McHale's wide after wide after chance being missed is now leading to players like Martin Cleary not having the confidence to pull the trigger. Yeah, I, I still think though that there's no, there's no need to panic usually. It's the psychological effect that, that it has on them. But I think Dunmore going down the middle. Kilconley are crowding out their D area and, and Dunmore going straight down the middle. They should try and go down the wings, pull them out a bit and then bring it back into the D area to finish the score off. Tommy Mannion is likely to go short and does. Swings the kick out. Very high though. And in the end it's a uh, Easily gathered, and now that could be punished. Jake Slattery, is he finally going to end that barren scoring spell? He is. Three points to one, one more lead, and Slattery gets that ball up and over the bar. All came from the kick out, which just hung in the air that few seconds too long. And in the end, Dunmore gather it, set up the point scoring opportunity, and Slattery didn't fluff his lines this time. Yeah, I, I think uh, if Dunmore press up on the Kilconley kick out, they are giving them trouble there. Uh, they're trying to, Kilconley are trying to go for Niall Daly, they've that sussed out, but I think they should try and press up against that breeze and put pressure, real pressure on Tommy Mannion. Well, over a quarter of an hour since their last score, so Dunmore will be pretty happy with that one. Great kick out down the middle from Mannion, wonderful, wonderful kick. Brilliantly gathered by Martin Newell in the middle of the field and Newell is happy to use Conor O'Neill up along the left hand touchline again good defending kept in play as well amazing work from Colin Lyons and Dunmore turn it over now an opportunity to go down the other end of the field as the ball is transferred very quickly to Sean Murray Murray looking for support decides to pop the pass to Dylan Brady he goes back to Martin Cleary he's getting on an awful lot of ball 3-1, Dunmore leading. If you're just joining us, Dunmore McHale's playing in black. Good Conley in the white jerseys and blue togs. Both chain strips. Long ball dropped in over the top. Might work out for Shane McGrath as he goes in on it. Certainly on the soft variety of that free as the Conley man looked like he completely overran the ball. But uh, referee felt there was contact and a free out to Kill Conley. Take it quickly. Getting on with the game. Niall Daly back to his midfield colleague Daniel Cuncannon close to the ground and some of the Bill Conley's were ooing and aahing the referee could have blown the whistle there but uh, again Dramore McHale's a heavy hit on Martin Cleary not so sure there was anything terribly wrong with it but he is absolutely winded taking it on the side and the referee has to stop the game this may well be a hot ball it might not even be a free but uh you have to always think of the welfare of a player, Jermyn. I'm sure you've often been hit on the blind side. Even if it is a legal shoulder to shoulder, when you're not expecting it, you can really be winded. Yeah, and I think uh, Martin Cleary had his hands out, so he wasn't really braced for that uh, for that collision. But I think it was Conor Neal that uh, collided with him. But I think Dunmore should try and press up in Kilkenny. They're still sitting off one or two. When they do press up, they put a lot of pressure on Kilkenny coming out with the ball. So I'd say if I was Kilkenny, Dunmore management, I'd be. I'd be uh, giving that message out from the sideline. 
Tomorrow just after realising that wasn't a free and the possession was with Dick Conley, so they restart the game with an indirect free, which is why there was one or two boos from the crowd. Dick Conley though in possession. Tried to drop that one inside to Jonathan Mannion. Mannion in turn to David Prendergast. Had that great goal opportunity for Dick Conley, being pushed down along the right-hand touchline, being put under pressure. Again, good defending by Dunmore to force him out the field. Martin Newell back out the field looking for Marsden. Infield he goes to Barry Cannon. Nice little hand pass across towards the inside line where Michael Murphy is bottled up. And Dunmore turn it over. Strength in numbers. McGrath all alone. But again, the ball not transferred to him. Just taking too long with possession. And just Thomas Leeson had the opportunity of feeding McGrath. The head never came up. Yeah, just two quick passes and and uh, McGrath was in there. He would probably he, with the lesson he has, he probably could win the whole way in for a goal chance at that stage. But uh, a chop opportunity missed for Dunmore. Might be able to get it back here though. If they got a free in, they have. And again, it's that range of 40 meters out into the town goal. And Pori Costa is going to have a crack at it, but you know he's going to be nervous about it. Yeah, the pressure is on him here now. He missed an easier one 10 yards further in about 10 minutes ago. This is a massive free for him for the rest of the game. Can he nail it? He should be able to nail it with the breeze, but can he hold his nerve? That's the question. 3-1 to Damore. This to make it 4-1. And the way this game is going, even that three-point lead might be healthy enough. A good kick from Costello. Much, much better. And at four points to one... Dunmore can see the half-time whistle coming and if they were to tack on one or two more the pendulum might just swing back a little bit more towards McHale's. Yeah, absolutely and I think that Kilconley probably haven't taken their chances either. You know, they missed a goal chance at a couple of scores and they've, they've left Dunmore in it but uh, that score from Poor Coslo will, uh, will settle him down now. You know, hopefully the, you know, the nerves will be gone and he'll be able to kick them freeze uh, for the rest of the day but let's see what they do in the kickouts here. Mannion driving this one right footed down the middle again clear he's underneath it but can't get a solid enough touch on it so the ball breaks down and works out for Kilconley and Martin Newell to hold onto the ball and drive forward fouled by Matthew Reddington in a vice like grip didn't let go of the Kilconley man and so it is Kilconley who get on with the game and with the free take it quickly Owen Daly soling up along the right hand touch line flicks it in field Jonathan Mannion he says play on nothing there advantage being played as they kindly hold possession the linesman Jerry Daly quick as well just to indicate what went on the Kilconley management is going absolutely ballistic on the sideline and it's have to be controlled by a number of the sideline officials here nothing to be uh, gamed by that one would imagine still Kilconley in possession and they'll be happy to keep eating up the clock Daniel Cuncannon. Little pop pass looking again for Owen Daly. All of this is using up valuable seconds and more chasing what would normally be shadows, but no chance of shadows on a day like this. And now all along inside Martin Newell. Is he going to have a pop at the post? He is. Swings it across the face of the goal. Again, Conor Gleeson may well keep this in play and does. Nobody coming near him though, so Gleeson has to hand pass it back inside towards his full back, Declan Radigan. Uses Colin Lyons. I think that's one thing about taking a shot into the wind as well. You nearly have to make sure it goes dead, Jeremy, because this really creates a platform for Dunmore now. Yeah, absolutely. And, and Merton Newell, although he started full four, is probably not known for his shooting, so probably should have played for the free or, or recycled the ball there. Dunmore, on the back of that ball being kept in play by Conor Gleeson, hold on to possession. Merton Cleary, though, loses it again. And the ball is fly kicked backwards. Did well in the end, Cleary, to hold possession. Ball flicked across. Going to be a line ball to Dunmore McHales. In a case... The linesman Jerry Daly had any doubts about which way to point. He was helped by about seven Dunmore mentors on the line, all pointing towards the town goal where Dunmore are attacking at the moment and playing with a really strong win. But a three-point lead looks very paltry in these conditions. Four points to one, Dunmore lead. Jay McGrath, middle of the field, but with a forest of Kilconley bodies in front of him. Dunmore trying to push forward, but really no space. And somebody's going to have to try and work the courage to pull the trigger. Will it be Dylan Brady? Plays it inside. Outside of the left. Poorly kicked out to the left-hand side and wide. Connor Mitchell, the latest to kick it wide. Tommy Mannion puts the hand up. He wants some attention, the Kilconley goalkeeper. But four points to one. The shooting has not been good. Yeah, but I, I still wouldn't panic if Dunmore. There's still three points up. It's hard to score uh, with that breeze. But um, I think with Dunmore, when they're attacking, they're going down the middle 
and uh, they should probably go down the wings if they can. Uh, they'll draw Kilconley, uh, the, the spearmen out, and it'll leave space for the in, in the D to take a shot. So, you know, they are going down the middle, playing, playing into Kilconley's hands. But I suppose like there's still three points in it. Kilconley have only scored one point. You know, so they'll be still okay. Tommy Mannion, it's just getting a little bit of physio work on the leg. Three minutes to be added on, so there will be another opportunity or two for either of these teams to get a score. Most probably done more with those elements. But at the moment, four points to one. Does it look like it's covering the kind of advantage that a team playing with the wind would want? Oh, that will play out in the second half, of course. And it will become the classic game of two halves as Kilconley will have the chance to play with the elements and try and get more than Dermore's four points. Can Dermore get more than one into the wind? That's the question, Jeremy. Yeah, I suppose I'm just looking at the bench there to see who could you, you know, who could come on to make a difference. You know, maybe Damien Redding in the second half or Dunmore. Is it, you know, you if he's it, fish, you'd imagine fish, he has to play. You yeah. know, and and on the Kilcanley side, then you see the two Kerrigans, John and Teddy Kerrigan. They would have played senior for Kilcanley, so maybe a substitute might be the guy to, to to win the game for either side. Another hotly contested kick out, well won. Again, just a foul, a needless foul in the middle of the field by Thomas Leeson whose frustration is starting to grow and I think Kieran Quinn has eventually ran out of patience with them. I mean, that's needless fouling but it's going to be a yellow card and again, a few more seconds on the clock eating up Paul Mannion who will have a real opportunity in this second half if he gets ball with that breeze behind him to be able to shoot at the posts. He's got Kilconley's only point and that came from an expertly taken free where he had to gauge the wind. But he'll have uh, plenty more opportunities, one would imagine, in the second half. An intriguing intermediate final. Low scoring, of course, but hotly contested. And this one will go down to the wire, one would imagine. Shane McGrath trying to get a tackle in there and doing very well. But still not dispossessing as Kilconley hold on to the ball. Barry Cannon again driving forward. Good work. On his shoulder, Niall Daly. Daly's got a man inside. If he plays it through, here's an opportunity. The centre-back, what a tackle! And uh, eventually, brilliantly blocked by Conor Gleeson at the end but you'd have to say Sean Murray with the challenge at the death has saved his team a goal oh my god what a save that was brilliant brilliant uh, block you know you, you would have to have backed I think it was Conor Newell that got the ball through Niall Daly put a brilliant ball through to him you know that if that goal went in the game changes completely but brilliant uh, brilliant block there's kept Dunmore in the game Murray will be a hero tonight if Dunmore get over the line because that was another game-changing moment. But Gleeson, with the block at the end, still there was an opportunity on the rebound. Let's see how Prendergast gets on with the 45. He'll be aiming this one miles right if he's to gauge the wind. He does so. He strikes it well. He strikes it expertly. It's a monumental kick from David Prendergast. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant score there. You know, it just shows the, the benefit of having someone that can kick a 45 like that. Usually it's goalkeepers now that are taking 45s, but uh, David Hernandez gets nailed that free. He just uh, hit it with everything he had. There wasn't much curl or flight with the ball. He kept it relatively low and a brilliant score. Drilled it into the breeze to make it four points to two. Wow. Gleeson now goes long with an absolute monster kick out. It flicks all the way through and it's inside. And Slattery's got a man on his left if he looks up. Jake Slattery's in on goal. Slattery on the 14. Slattery shoots. It's brilliantly saved. The rebound is blocked out for a 45. Wonderful defending as well. A great touch from Tommy Mannion. Slattery didn't get the full purchase on the shot, but it was definitely going by the goalkeeper. Mannion with a great block. And in the end, the follow up was brilliantly blocked out at the expense of a 45 by Niall Mullen, the cornerback, who did really well. What defending at both ends, Jeremy? Yeah, brilliant both. What a kick-up by Conor Gleeson. It was a bit like Tyrone's goal in the all Ireland final. Uh, it went all the way to the half hour and a flick on. Jake Slattery had it. And uh, he went for the goal. He backed himself. Maybe could he have taken the, the point? Uh, if they get this 45, they, it, uh, they will take it. But um, another opportunity missed. And there has been goal chances in this game. Thomas Gleeson with the 45. It's a big kick. If Demore can get a point out of that attack, Gleeson strikes it, but out to the right-hand side, and that really never had the purchase. One wonders, should they have brought up the goalkeeper, uh, up his brother, Connor, because he's been taking plenty of long-range long range ones, but Demore's wide count just continues to rise. Yeah, but, you know, they have to take some... Uh, 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 the, the kick out there from Connor Gleeson, that ball went 60, 70 yards. Unbelievable kick. Probably more of that, you know, if they hit their midfielders in the half forward line, it's an attacking platform straight away, so I'm sure he hasn't had many to do in the first half, but he won't get as far in the second half. 
Kick out down the middle of the field. Mannion gets a good touch. Is there a score into more before half time? Ball dropped in the middle of the field. Referee is not inclined to give a free. And in the end, says it's going to be a hot ball. Dunmore and Kilconley locked together in a brilliant intermediate final. Four points to two. Great effort on both sides. And in the end, a free to Kilconley. Niall Daly, the man fouled. And now he's got a man running all alone, but it's a poor kick from Daly. And in the end, it's easily grabbed by Dylan Brady, who's got support down the right-hand channel. It's a brilliant kick pass from Brady to Gleeson. Again, though, the first instinct is to solo the ball. He wins the free, and that's surely going to be a yellow card for one of the Kilconley players. Paul Mannion could be the one adjudged by the referee. And indeed, just the temperature has risen a little bit in the last few minutes. That was cynical. And in the end, it's Mannion who gets the yellow for the foul. And now let's see if Gleeson takes this off the hands or does he invite out Pori Costello? Well, surely Costello is the best bet here from the 45. Gleeson is being urged to go short, but one would imagine with those elements that it would be easily kickable. But he goes short, kicks it down the line. Great ball, won by Slattery. Jake Slattery gives it back out towards Martin Cleary. The clock running down all the time. Referee may well blow for half time here. Dunmore don't get a shot in. Radigan cross towards the centre to Danny Ford who drops the ball. Back to Radigan, but Dunmore took too long. The clock ran out on them and it's half time. Dunmore McHale's four points. Kilconley two points. Great effort from both sides. A lot of wides from Dunmore though, but a couple of great goal chances that Kilconley scuppered as well. So both sides will be going in with regrets at half time. Yeah, absolutely. I, you know, there's been, I'd say, probably four go good goal chances, two on each side. Um, you know, it's an even, it's an even game. I would say Kilkenny will be happier because they have that gale force breeze. But I have to say, I think if it won't be a huge disadvantage to Dunmore that the long game isn't really suiting them in a wet day. So running the ball might suit them better, and they have got an in, uh, energetic half back line, half forward line. So interesting to see. Probably the uh, Kilkenny are probably favourites for now, but who? who knows it's all to play for there'll be very little in this I suspect at the end Jim with either way and if one team eventually can find the back of the net that might be decisive because there are chances being created but nonetheless it is half time in the intermediate football final it's Dermore McHale's four points Kilconley two
hükümet bu şefe korumak. Back to Chum Stadium for the second half of the Galway Intermediate Club football final. This match very delicately poised with Damore McHales leading Kilconley by four points to two. And Damore back out on the field first. And I'd imagine with the words of their management team ringing in their ears after all of those chances. But yes, despite missing so much in that first half, Damore may take some oxygen from the couple of goal misses that Kilconley had or they would be in big bother. They would, yeah, and I'm, I'm sure that the management team are saying that they don't want to be back in the town of Damore uh, second year in a row with, with a loss and the, 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 the pain that they would have suffered over the last few years. So that should be a motivation. Whether that will drive them on or, or, or hold them back, we'll have to wait and see. But uh, I'm sure Kilconley are, are, are raring to go as well. You know, they've did a very good first half, but they now need to finish off the, 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 uh, the thing now because they have got the breeze. Paul Mannion is out midfield for uh, for the throw, and it's wonder will he go inside now uh, with the Gale Force breeze, they'll definitely play some sharpshooter inside either himself or Prindergast, but we'll just have to wait and see. Waiting on the match referee to re emerge, Kieran Quinn and his linesman coming down the tunnel and getting ready for a high pressure second half. A lot at stake. A place back in the senior ranks. For the first time in 15 years at stake for Dunmore McHales. They haven't been senior since 07. And of course for Kilconley, looking to get back there for the first time in four years. A couple of chopping and changing going on at either end as well. And of course Tommy Mannion who managed to get some running repairs towards the end of that half. He's somewhat gingerly making his way back into the goals. But the big news for Dunmore McHales... Is Damien Reddington is in for the second half? Yeah, I suppose probably the most experienced player in, in that uh, Dunmore dressing room, Damien Reddington. We all know, uh, saw him in 2007 win the minor title. Uh, he's in, he's experienced, he's a confident player. You know, they'll need all that guile up there in the second half against that Gale. He seems to be playing the full forward line. He's running back and over across the 14, so it's hard to know where he'll actually end up. But uh, that's a big call. They're probably playing their trump card a bit earlier than they thought. Well, it's a big move for Dunmore. Reddington in, and he goes straight into the full forward line along with Pori Costello and Jake Slattery. Will that be a pivotal decision from the Drumore management as we get ready for the second half? All in readiness then, 30 minutes to decide the intermediate football title with Drumore taking a two-point advantage into the second half an hour. Referee Kieran Quinn just checking with his umpires. Two of them slightly later than the others in getting into position with the more win the throw in and straight away it's Shane McGrath driving forward a man on his shoulder is bursting away through his Reddington straight in on goal Reddington a great save from Tommy Mannion it's another chance gone a begging from Dunmore straight from the throw in Mannion got a touch though he'll get the credit but again another goal chance passed up yeah, uh, what a brilliant save by Tommy Mannion. That was the tonic that Dunmore would have needed, but what athleticism for, from Shane McGrath. He just got the ball. He's such a classy player. Came through, laid it off to Matthew Redditon, and uh, I, you know we didn't see the shot from here, the angle, but uh, it looked like a great save from Tommy Mannion. He definitely got a strong hand on it. And now let's see if Thomas Leeson can do what David Prendergast did in the first half, which is point a 45 into the wind. Leeson, can he get a purchase on this one? Right footed, skies it up in the air. It's going to drop in around the house. Dangerous ball, but easily gathered by Niall Daly in front of his own crossbar. And that never had the distance. And that was, a, in the end, a mistake because Damore really could have done with that ball going dead. Well kept in play. Wonderful work by a man who's had a great game for Damore. Sean Murray made that brilliant block in the first half. Again, Damore trying to pick the ball up and drive forward. Touched on the ground. That would be a free to kick Conley. The man penalised Connor Mitchell. Dunmore not happy with that decision in the ball kicked against the Dunmore man so that confirmation of the substitution being announced Damien Reddington coming in for Brendan Carr at half time for Dunmore McHales and a free to kill Conley and straight away we're into high octane stuff here in Shum Stadium every decision now is going to be challenged to the hilt every ball fought for 
Let's get Connolly try and get that first score of the second half. What a chance it was for Damore, even with Reddington. Even the goal chances they've had, Jim, Damore could have tapped three of them over the bar and they'd be in a very healthy position. Yeah, and they've missed 245 and you'd wonder against that breeze, would they be better off to bring Conor Gleeson up to take them scores? Against Gale Force breeze, he has a huge boot on him. Um, I think they should probably give him the, 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 the reins of all the 45 from now on. Shot going out to the left-hand side and wide as Jeremy was talking there from Kilconley. So the breeze is obviously a little bit more difficult than we're given it credit for as Leeson goes with the kick out down this left-hand side. Again, Thomas Leeson, his brother, offering himself up for the kick out. Back it goes out the field towards Matthew Reddington. He's just a little bit slow in getting rid of the ball but gives it to Colin Lyons who in turn gets it out to Shane McGrath. McGrath, nice little punch pass. Now there's a bit of space opening up for Thomas Leeson in turn poor ball however from Mitchell but he's uh, got away with it Connor Mitchell back it goes to Moore slowly but surely picking their way through Thomas Leeson again off to Shane McGrath McGrath around the corner needs support not a lot of options plays a lovely ball over the top but just didn't quite get the accuracy on it for Damian Reddington and he has to double back and the chance is momentarily being lost as McGrath tries to get out of the right hand side takes a bit of a dive and in the end has to play a brilliant hand pass out the field to Martin Cleary to keep the ball alive and Damore with Matthew Reddington can come again to Declan Radigan now the initial momentum lost but Damore still have possession Sean Murray looking for support has to go backwards decides to work his way to Connor Mitchell nice ball inside little pull back is that a free on Damian Reddington referee says no Damore can't believe it Reddington wins the ball back gives it off in turn to Sean Murray back it goes to Pori Costello tries to curl one in but misses it out to the right hand side and wide Damore baying for a free there but nothing forthcoming yeah unlucky there not to get a free you, you've often seen them given but that's Kieran is referring it that way but I, I think Pori Costello probably took the wrong option there because every wide is draining the confidence out of Damore you know if you're playing if you're a Damore player you're probably trying to work it in even fist the ball over the bar at this stage to play for the free because you know them wayward shots are draining the confidence of the whole team I'm sure the Damore wide count is probably hitting double figures at this stage. Not to mention the goal chances that were missed. And Tommy Mannion's couple of saves. Ball broken down in the middle of the field by Damore McHales, who have started really well in this second half. No change to the scoreboard. It's still 4-2 to the McHales. And this game has continued with a very similar pattern to the first half, regardless of the breeze conditions. It's Dunmore who are dominating possession. Not on the scoreboard, though. Ball chipped forward, lovely pass into position for Damien Reddington. Off the left, oh, skies it up into the air. It's not even going to go wide, it's going to test Tommy Mannion, who goes with the two fists, safe in the knowledge that Jonathan Mannion was there to pick up the breaking ball. And Kilconley, from deep, will now try and launch this ball up the field. It's a bit of a Gary Owen up and under, and in truth, that ball was always going to be close to the sideline, too close. Line ball to Dunmore, and so the opportunity for the McHales to launch another attack they maintain a lead by four points to two in this low scoring intermediate final heavy tackling going in and the live wire Dylan Brady does well to hold on to possession though lovely chip ball into the arms of Jake Slattery nice ball to Brady he's in position can Brady find the target he can it's curling off the post and over brilliant kick from Dylan Brady just when it looked like the wind had pulled it to the left it glanced off the post what an important score yeah brilliant score by Dylan Brady there the more have played all the, uh, fo the football set since the start of the second half that's their first score but it was probably the, one of the most difficult shots to take on there by Dylan Brady you know he, he backed himself and nailed it that should lift the whole confidence of the team now that's a big moment in the game no question Brady was the difference in that shot being taken on and the ball being recycled took the onus on himself to make sure he took the shot and had the accuracy to make it 5-2 great catch by Niall Daly however in the middle of the field and the ball in the end is well mistakenly being left by Dunmore McHales and it's picked up by Kilconley somewhat fortuitously Dylan Brady just getting his wires crossed nice ball into Prendergast takes the mark Dunmore just caught sleeping there and Prendergast now has the opportunity to kick an immediate response for Kilconley that would pull it back to 5-3. Outside the D, does his usual pre-shot routine before right-footed he strikes it and strikes it poorly into the hands of Conor Gleeson. So that balances out the misses Dunmore had from a similar position. 
A bit of a let off for Dunmore there. Yeah, absolutely. You, you, you know, I'd say that breeze is is a lot tougher than we than we see, look at up from up here. But that's the same position as Porra Cosgrove have missed it in the or Costello missed it in the first half. So uh, Dunmore will get a lift out of that. Again, possession taken into the tackle by Thomas Leeson. Another heavy foul from Paul Mannion, and straight away Gary Delaney, the Dunmore coach, is in there, and uh, Mannion's got to be careful here. Yeah, he's putting in a lot of big hits, but it's getting hot and heavy out there now. The more driving on, it's Reddington trying to get inside a couple of challenges. Is that a high tackle? Again, referee says play on. Somehow Matthew Reddington holds onto the ball and then goes to ground. Referee says touched on the ground and a free to kill Conley. And the more disgusted with some of these decisions, <laughs> and it's really getting hot and heavy out there now. Yeah, you know, it, it's it's probably if there's a rash challenge, you could see a red card very quickly here because both teams have their uh, blood up at, the, at this stage. But uh, the referee's letting a lot go, and the crowd aren't happy with it. It could come back to haunt Kieran Quinn not giving some of these decisions because it does build up a lot of tension in the crowd and on the sideline. And right now, these teams are really revved up for this intermediate final. Eight minutes into the second half, Demore McKay's lead by five points to two, but it's still Conley on the surge. Ball down the right-hand channel, an opportunity now for Johnny Mannion. Jonathan Mannion tries to recycle the ball out the field and does well, gets it back out the field. Chance now for Martin Newell, no, decides not to take on the shot, gives it to Barry uh, Cochannon, back it goes to Daly, his effort half blocked down. Conor Gleeson should be out there to Gal and does. Gleeson does well, pull back, but referee says play on. No, goes it back, gives the free to Demore. Gleeson will take it short, and take it quickly and move the game on. The more will feel a certain sense of injustice over some of the decisions in the last few minutes. But that can work to your advantage as well. Referee eventually gives the free. The more were a bit nervous that he'd give it as well in that instance. Yeah, but, um, you know, I, I think Kilcanley, you'd wonder should they push Paul Mannion inside. They, they, they have pl there's plenty of room in there. The more aren't dropping anyone back. But uh, they don't seem to have much kind of pace inside. And he's a, he's a ball winner. They, you, know, you might look at putting him in there. Yeah, the more are being fairly adventurous in this second half they know that they're going to keep playing their game plan whatever happens Declan Radigan not afraid to get forward gives it off to Colin Lyons likewise Lyons -y, looking for support shouts of two hops ignored by the referee as Dunmore start from the back again lovely ball to Matthew Reddington drips it into the corner excellent kick pass chance for Brady having a run of the man lovely ball across opportunity inside the shot coming in off the post oh. what a chance for Dunmore Connor Mitchell the butt of the post saves Kilconley. That would have been a match winner, one would have thought. Yeah, very, very unlucky if I had more hit, hit the bottom of the push with Conor Mitchell. You know, they worked a brilliant play up the field, waited for the pass to come and played it in, but very unlucky in front of goal to more today. How neither side has managed to score a goal is anyone's guess. Looked like a throw ball there, the referee says play on. As Dunmore win it back, their tails are up even with that miss. Dunmore feel that this game is there for the taking for them. Nice little hand pass from Gleeson up along the line to Reddington. Into Mitchell, he's got a man all alone inside but didn't look up, decides to come backwards, decides to play it safe. And Sean Murray is the man who plays it back towards Martin Cleary. Dunmore just continue to surge forward, Jeremy. They're going after this game. Yeah, they're doing very well. They're still three points up. Kilconley haven't put Anton on the board but I think Damien Gleeson has settled them down up there. Ford is fouled and advantage was into McGrath and Dennis Fallon runs in. And Dunmore know that had the referee waited just a half a second. Shane McGrath was in on goals. Yeah, but I suppose the, the way uh, Dunmore are taking their chances for goals, they might be better off to take this free and kick it over the bar now. If they get a score, they'll put them four up. So this is a big free. Pori Coslo will feel that this is an important kick. Just inside the edge of the D, Coslo off the right gives it a lot of height, but has got great accuracy and puts it over the bar. And Dunmore have got the first two points of the second half into the wind inside 11 minutes of that half so that's a tremendous effort from the McHales yeah I, I think Damien Reddington inside for Demore is making an awful lot of runs in there he's creating havoc so uh, the, the movement is a lot better and Demore have just taken over this I think uh, Kilkenny are making a couple of substitutions and badly needed James Moran is in and they've decided to make a couple of changes as the ball is broken down the right hand side again very well kept in play but grabbed by McGrath does really well down this left hand side to use Colin Lyons. Demore's gander is up now. Nice little pass with Leeson in towards Cleary. Back it goes to Thomas Leeson. Again, a heavy tackle. And the tackles are flying in here, left, right, and centre. The referee is being very calm, but nonetheless, the changes have been rang by Kilconley. They're the first ones. Connor Marsden has gone off, so to Michael Murphy. He'll be disappointed. James Moran into the game as we mentioned. 
as the more continue on with the ball and with the play and give it off towards Connor Mitchell how close was he to getting the first goal of this county final the post saving Kilconley the more leading though by six points to two Martin Cleary back it goes to the waiting arms of Matthew Reddington to Martin Cleary huge amount of possession for Demore McHales they've absolutely dominated this game in that context but seven guilt edged chances have been spurned including a couple of great saves ball off the post chances that Demore McHales right now are not feeling the pinch on because they lead by six points to two and they are playing keep ball out around the middle of the field Shane McGrath back out towards Declan Rattigan who makes an absolute hash of it and Damore could be caught on the counter as Niall Daly has fouled a real unforced error there and just Damore overplaying the ball yeah Damore are lucky there but I suppose they're still four points up another couple of scores could see them through here if they don't concede a goal well they could concede a point here as Conor O'Neill goes forward it's not Moore to Prendergast off the right is he thinking about going for Moore no goes back out the field Moore the man who's come in as a sub back to Prendergast and Moore not getting enough bodies back there right now the ball is fly kick clear is the shot coming in from distance is that going to take it's not it's going to drop short into the goalkeeper's hands and that's a mistake from Martin Newell certainly no excuses for being short with that win behind but the more McHales will be lifted by Kilconley's failure to take their chances as well yeah Martin Newell has probably played all his football in the backs uh, over the years and he's, t- he's, he's had two shots and none of them have went over the bar so I think they should try and get Paul Mannion in these shooting positions he's out around the middle but he hasn't got on much ball there yet again Dunmore baying for a black card for the third man tackle referee was having none of it Dunmore stay calm stay composed and from their perspective stay in possession Danny Ford back to Declan Radigan and off in turn to Thomas Gleeson. He's had a, a very busy last 20 minutes getting on a lot of ball. Rattigan driving forward. Took a few steps. The referee says play on. Rattigan still driving on and no real support. So has to use Gleeson on the shoulder. Thomas Gleeson through the middle. Great work from Thomas. Off the left. He's just going to drive it out to the left hand side and wide. A good chance for Dunmore. They're eighth wide. But nonetheless, it was a well-worked move. There was only the two of them. Yeah, it's funny with, with Dunmore. They're, they, it's opening up down the centre of the pitch for them and they're cutting right through, but they're probably missing someone to come across the loop and just tap the ball over the bar for the runner who's made all that hard runs. But uh, a couple of more scores will see this out for Dunmore, I would say. And they've won a breaking ball in the middle of the field. Niall Daly's influence has been curbed significantly by Martin Cleary. Lovely ball in from Reddington, very close to the ground, but well picked up by Costello, who's going the wrong way, but does well to play that ball infield towards... Dylan Brady who's got one of the points where he goes to ground easily dispossessed and that's cheap and easy for Kilconley to win the ball back and counter attack and here they come with JP Byrne driving on the full back on the shoulder of Jonathan Mannion back it goes to Paul Mannion can he get the right boot on this one jinx inside he'll have to go off the left and does but again drops it short and it's too easy for Conor Gleeson who's grabbing so many of these balls that are finding the way short and straight away can start a counter attack now, can Demore McHales make anything of this latest Kilconley miss? Shane McGrath lazily swings around the challenge of Owen Daly to win the ball and give it to Thomas Gleeson. Fouls is the referee. And he's just again having a word and says to Barry Concannon, hold on a minute, that's a third foul. He's going to produce a yellow card and does. So Kilconley have got two yellows now. They're number five and they're number 15. Just slows down the clock as we reach... The 16-minute mark in the second half, Kilconley failing to score in the third quarter, Jim, with the wind. Yeah, you'd wonder Paul Mannion is kind of playing in the half-forward line. He's, he's been well marshalled by Danny Ford, but he's getting the, his chances way out of the D area. You'd wonder should they try and put him at the edge of the D and, and play a few balls through him because he has got the talent to get the scores. Battling hard over there with Dylan Brady to try and win the ball and does really well as it's recycled from Martin Cleary towards Matthew Reddington outside of the right trying to play it inside to Pori Costa there's a quality ball from Reddington to Costa a lovely turn really asking a lot of JP Byrne Costa bottled up and out over the sideline Linesman says line ball to Kilconley Costa just couldn't get the hand pass away strong pressure from Kilconley both teams really have put in such an effort in this game fitness will play a part I'm sure in the last quarter which we're in right now Dunmore lead by four Kilconley chasing this county final felt they had the hard work done in being within two points at half time but scores have proved elusive since the restart here in Tume Stadium Kilconley now trying to get the ball forward to Paul Mannion from Conor O'Neill and does well O'Neill to Mannion being tracked over there by Danny Ford Mannion has a free coming 
stop it, the society is going to take it. And that would put a little bit of added pressure because this is over on the right-hand side. It's not an easy free. And we're almost getting to the point where it's almost a must-make for Kilcombe. Yeah, and you have to you know, give great credit to Danny Ford. He's keeping Paul Mannion out away from goal. He's letting him have the ball out in the wings. He's not letting him cut inside. This is a really difficult free from Paul, but they need some inspiration from somewhere. They haven't scored in the second half yet, I don't think, and uh, you know, they need some inspiration. The second half that's ticking past 18 minutes, and this is a very important kick for Mannion. Off the right boot, Kilconley know that their sharp shooting hero has rescued them many a day in the championship. Here he goes, out to the right hand side and ballooned badly wide. The same affliction that hit Dunmore in the first half seems to be hitting Kilconley. They're not able to judge that wind. Yeah, it's, it, uh, Kilconley have to come out now and go after this game. They can't sit back anymore. They have to do something or the, or the game is over. A couple of points will see Dunmore through here. Kick out from Conor Gleeson goes short. Again, good work from Jamal McHales and from Luke Murray to get that one away. Both Luke and Sean Murray have had excellent county finals so far. Gleeson goes short to Colin Lyons. He's been very composed, Conor Gleeson, between the posts and he's had quite a bit to do in the second half, largely down to Kilconley shots falling short. But Jamal now creeping ever closer to this elusive intermediate title that they've been a decade and a half waving to try and win. Matthew Reddington, centre of the field. Oh, beautiful dummy from Reddington. This is glorious work. Absolutely motoring through the middle. He's got Ford on his left. Ford could pass it back to Reddington. Little nudge. Back it goes. Should be a score. Damien Reddington up and into the goalkeeper's hands. What a chance gone a begging. The hard work done. And yet, a crucial ball dropped short but what a bit of work from Matthew Reddington yeah Matthew Reddington he's so athletic when he gets cutting through there and you know he would have backed his brother uh, Damien to slap that ball over the bar but uh, unfortunately for them but can have, the, have a chance now here well they have but they've had the ball turned over by Jake Slattery what a tackle from young Slattery what a work rate the forwards and the skill level in the tackling has been tremendous from Dramon McHale so much work on the training ground coming to the fore on the biggest day of all the county final and Kilconley just look like they are running out of ideas up front. Battling away for possession there is Corey Costa, but can't quite get there. He's rescued by Dylan Brady. He'll thank his young forward colleague for winning that ball back for him. Dunmore, though, putting a lot of pressure on themselves with this keep ball tactic out near the far touchline and no real support there. So this is real danger. Corey Costa is going all the way back towards Luke Murray, who will use his goalkeeper, and this is shades of last year where Dunmore were inviting trouble it's all very calm at the moment as they hold the ball but Luke Murray knows he needs to bring this ball up the field flicks it back infield for the man you really want on the ball Reddington slips it ball almost got through to Thomas Leeson but he goes to ground and looks like he may need a bit of attention and he's in a bit of bother as well Thomas Leeson substitution may be required for Dunmore McHales look like a hamstring injury uh, still Conley keep going Middle of the field, possession with Martin Newell. What a soldier he's been over the years for Kilconley. Back to Caelan McCafferty, who came on in the second half. Back to Niall Mullen. Kilconley have an extra man now as Leeson lies down at the other end of the field. Niall Daly being put under pressure. Great blocking from Dunmore, great hassling. And again, forcing Kilconley back outside their own 45. A line of Dunmore defenders across their own 45 trying to stop this latest Kilconley attack. Newell might have to take the shot. He does. Off the right. Martin Newell goes for it and gets it. It's a super kick. He had to get it. And finally Newell, on 21 minutes, gets the first score of the second half for Kilconley. Is that their road to redemption? Yeah, an inspirational score for Martin. He's had two shots and, and two of them have dropped short, I think. To take that on is great bravery and courage and a brilliant, brilliant score. Kilconley need to push up now. They need to uh, you know, really put pressure on this kick out and try and turn them over early. Six points to three. Dunmore McHale's lead. Conor Gleeson directing traffic. <coughs> Thomas Gleeson trying to shrug off that injury. Conor's kick out goes really putting a lot of pressure on Dylan Brady, but does very well to give it off to Declan Radigan, who spins the challenge, drives out from the back, and gives it off to Luke Murray. Good work from Dunmore. If Murray looks up, he's a man running over the shoulder, but goes back to Radigan. Declan driving forward, plays it back. It's good, composed football from Dunmore McHale's in really difficult conditions. You have to admire their persistence 
with going with the short game plan and now it's off to McGrath, Jersey pulled off his back, play on to the referee, McGrath could have been given an advantage, the referee says none forthcoming, not so sure it's much advantage to more getting a free out there Jermyn, but they'll still take it, it breaks the play, uses up a few more seconds, 22 minutes gone in the second half, a free, a very difficult free for Costello. Again, no sign of Conor Gleeson being brought up. They're happy that Costello might have the legs to kick this one or he may just go short and keep the ball alive. Yeah, uh, uh, Dunmore are working the ball through the hands and it's suiting them. Uh, Shane, Shane McGrath, what balance this guy has. He's only a young, young player, but a big future ahead of him. Terrible free from Costello. Dunmore might rue that one because it's a free out to Kilconley, but uh, really a nothing kick in the end. Just kicked it up in the air and Kilconley have turned it over. Another momentum shift in this topsy-turvy county final. Kilconley and Dunmore McHales both wearing chain strips. Dunmore in the all black with the green trim. Kilconley with the white jerseys and the blue shorts. They'll be hoping that they can put in a big finish. The last seven minutes plus stoppage time will decide it all. Dunmore have a three-point buffer. Is it enough? 6-3 they lead as Kilconley drive on. The Cafferty off a turn to Keen Davin. Davin infield though doesn't find the target and Martin Cleary can pick it up the unforced error count now starting to grow Jake Slattery lovely ball to Gleeson what a pass if he looks up he's got Reddington all alone but he didn't and it's just the head is down all the time in those instances Gleeson pops it off nice ball from Costello into Damien Reddington Damien might just play keep ball here and pop it back towards the trusty Sean Murray who's had a tremendous match back from Damien Reddington all the way to McGrath McGrath could switch the point of the attack and get it over the far side of the field towards Connor Mitchell to Matthew Reddington. Is there a shot coming in here from distance? Brady goes for it, but out to the left hand side and wide. The more won't be too unhappy with that, given the clock is very much against Kilconley. Six minutes plus stoppages. Kilconley are going to have to shoot everything on sight from now on. Yeah. And here comes their hero. Teddy Kerrigan is in the game for the last six minutes. Can he rescue it? Yeah, they need a focal point up there. I was just looking at Kilconnie's attack that time. They had only one player inside the opposition 45 and they're four, three points down. They really need to commit a few players to hold up there as a focal point to bring the play up. They can't work it through the hands all the time. Martin Newell's come off. He's done a, a, a great game, but it's up to Teddy Curringham now to see can he uh, win some ball. I presume he'll go inside, uh, but they need a focal point in there. Danny Ford has picked up a yellow card for Dunmore. So he'll be careful for the last few minutes. Kick out, long, straight, down the middle from the Kilcalli goalkeeper, Tommy Mannion. He finds a target, Dunmore was sucked in. An opportunity for Mannion. He's going to have a run at Ford, he's around him. Mannion is in on goal, this is a big chance for Kilcalli. Back to Mannion, he's in and Gleeson is out to rescue the day. And win the ball back for Dunmore. Radigan chips it and completes the clearance with a nice ball into the middle of the field. Well run by Cleary, he's got a man. This could be a pivotal moment in the game. That work by Conor Gleeson could win them the county final. Off to Jake Slattery. Slattery's on the 45. He's motoring forward, he's been pushed in the back from Barry Kilcannon. Is that another yellow? The referee's gonna have a look at it. He's gonna have to call him out and this could be curtains for Barry Kilcannon if the referee gives him a double yellow. Is it a cynical foul? The referee is just checking the number of the Kilconley man with his linesman, Noel Dempsey concurs. It's the number five and Barry could be in trouble. The referee, though, may just instead let this off at being a free. Well, he's having a different conversation. I think he should know it's Barry Concannon, but I don't think he's going to show him the second yellow. Well, I guarantee you one thing, if he wasn't on a yellow, he would be getting one right now. But the referees decide to leave it 15 v 15. Yeah, what a chance that was for Kilconley. Paul Mannion got the ball, got the ball in the right area, he went around his man, played it to Teddy. Could, could Teddy have taken the shot and had, had a rattle at himself? He tried to play it to Paul Mannion. The, po the ball didn't go to hand and they, it was an opportunity missed. But now uh, Dunmore have a chance to put this ball over the bar. You would think if they get a score of this, it'll probably see them through. Costello has got to do better with the quick free this time. The last one was a bit of a nothing kick. And the end, he goes backwards to Martin Cleary, who gives it straight back. And now the game is alive for Costello. Porrick outside the 45. Lovely ball inside. That would have been a mark had it travelled another yard, but it doesn't matter because Damien Reddington is around his man. Damien is in on goal. Can he punch the point that could win the match? Reddington up and over the bar. He was the match winner for Galway in 07. He could well be the match winner for Dunmore in 22. Yeah, he's been absolutely brilliant since he's come on. He's been a focal point up there. He's organised the players. Um, he got that ball. He just let, let the back come by him and took him on. Showed a, a clean pair of heels and fits it over the bear. Played the percentages. Brilliant score by him. 
Jake Slattery almost wins the kickout but doesn't. Barry Concannon wins the breaking ball. And now Kilconley are on red alert because they know that the time is against them. Long ball driven inside by Conor O'Neill. In it goes to Dangerman Mannion. Dublin, uh, Dunmore have doubled up on him. Back to Mannion. Needs to get a score. Gives it back out the field. The shot coming in. It's out to the left hand side. And the air is just starting to deflate from the Kilconley tyres. You just get the feeling they needed that one. The shot from Niall Daly is to the left and wide. And Dunmore are edging so close. Yeah, they still look a bit more dangerous. They have Paul Manning inside now. They, they look like they've a, they've a focal point in there. He will get a couple of chances. Kick out has gone a begging though. Back it goes straight to Kilconley. An opportunity now on the right hand side for Jonathan Mannion. Back to Daly. Can he rescue the situation with a point? He missed the last one. Daly drops it in and drops it short, and it's in the net. Gleason has dropped it. And the ball is flicked into the back of the net. And another nightmare goal for Damore McHales. And the worst case scenario could well be about to happen to Moore again. Are they about to butcher a winning position in a county final with victory practically in their grasp? And nothing shot from Niall Daly. Dropped short. Gleason tried to grab it. Dropped it down and the ball palmed into the back of the net. Yeah, it's hard to believe there's only a point in this game. Dunmore have owned the ball for both halves and they're only a point down. Kilconley haven't even uh, uh, you know, cut them open with a few opportunities, but I think it's Damien Prendergast is down now. He's slowing it down. I think he's okay, but you know, it's 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 uh, it's Kilconley now. That you hear the crowd. It's got, the crowd have gone mad here, so this kickout is going to be huge. It all came from a kickout. David Prendergast, the man who got the goal. Gleeson has got to find the target here. He goes for Jake Slattery. Slattery loses it though. The ball is breaking inside. The Collie are nearly there and nearly have it. If they get another chance, they will be level. Hard to believe. Seven points to 1-3. Dunmore have just brought all this on themselves. The kick out from Conor Gleeson that went pear-shaped. And then to compound the error, unfortunately for Dunmore... They are hanging on at the death in this county final. They still have the lead, though, with a minute to go. They still have the lead. You know, they're, they're trying to set piece of a kick out out to the wing, but it's leaving them wide open at the back if they don't win it. And, uh, you know, it has been a very poor um, uh, opportunity there to let in for them. And uh, not, they're down to it now. It, it's a turnover a ball here. Yeah. Kilconley have it back again. Connor Mitchell has lost it in the tackle, and Kilconley can come knowing that They've got loads of time to get this equaliser. Shane McGrath lunged in to try and win it, but missed it. And now Kilconley have the opportunity to level the match. And if they get a score here, they'll have plenty of time to win it. The ball is driving through. Opportunity for Daniel Kilconley. Kilconley off the right. A chance to level it. It's high. It's dropping. It's out to the right and wide. What a chance, gone a begging. Dunmore somehow still in front. Yeah, Daniel Kilconley, the whole thing opened up for him there. You know, he probably should have waited. Uh, Paul Mannion was was, who, was uh, looping around. We probably should have waited and given that ball for the equaliser. But a big press from Kilconley here on the kickout. Huge kickout. Well, Dunmore are going to make a change and they bring in Joe Burke. And if ever Dunmore need the Garofrons man to pluck one from the sky, it's going to be now. But... That's actually another, it's a different change altogether. Uh, Damore McHale's making a switch there. Looks like. I think it's Michael Brady. Michael Brady, Brady that's yeah. in. Brady that's coming in. Man coming off is Dylan Brady. So. Dunmore, and again, Radigan has dropped the ball from the kick out. Another mistake. Fouls his man. Free in for Kilconley. What is it about Damore McHale's? I, I, yeah, uh, they're they're going short with the kickouts in a in in a wet day. They should probably just kick the ball as far as they can. Conor Gleeson has a uh, kickout that can go sixty yards. They're really uh, playing the ball into Kilconley's hands here. You know, going short with it. There's a huge kick from uh, Paul Mannion. It probably suits him the side of the play it is. But uh, there's a gale force breeze with him. But he just needs to put it out there and hopefully the wind will br- uh, pull it back in for him. Remember, it's a county final, so if they're level, it's a replay. It's only in the replay do we get extra time and penalties. But you'd have to say this has been almost a replica of last year as Dunmore have somehow found a way to not win this game. If Mannion kicks this, the sides will be level. Two minutes to be added on. We've played one of them. This is one of maybe two last gasp opportunities for Kilconley to level the match. The roof will come off Tume Stadium if Mannion gets this one. Right footed, kicks it high, gets the curl on it. It's coming round, it's up, it's high, it's off the post. It drops inside. Who's going to win it? It's Brady. Brady wins the ball. Can he get the free out? He can't. He drops the ball. It's over there on the side. And Damore somehow trying to come away with the ball. The ball has been bounced over there and kept in play by Reddington. 
the team captain flicks it out lovely ball captain plays that going to be a free out referee says play on Dunmore still have it Reddington the width of the post it's a free to Dunmore is that the chance for Kilconley gone Jim back off the upright as the whole of Dunmore and Kilconley held their breath is that a little bit of luck for Dunmore? Yeah, it was a cruel, cruel uh, um, uh, outcome there for Paul Mannion. He, he, we were looking right behind him. We thought he just had enough for to come in, and it just hit the post dead on and came out. Very, very unlucky not to bring this game to extra time, but Dunmore are going to hold on. They'll probably get one more chance. There's 32 minutes gone. There's probably a few minutes of injury time, so they may get another chance. Time is up, but there will be at least another play. The referee is indicating to Dunmore to get on with the game. And this possession now is absolutely critical. Can Dunmore somehow get the ball to a player on their own team? It's Jack Slattery who has it up along the line. Slattery just needs to hold on to the ball. He's going for the corner flag. Slattery just needs to hold on to it. He still has it. Great work from Slattery. Off the right, he drops it into the goalkeeper. Well, real experience was lost there when all he needed to do was turn around and kick it into the stand. He's given Kilcalli an opportunity to drive on and level this match. Another big moment that Dunmore will look back on with regret. It's with Teddy Kerrigan. Kerrigan back inside. Dunmore can't afford to foul. Linesy trying to get a tackle in on Prendergast. Prendergast can level it. Prendergast off the right, kicks it high. He kicks it out to the right-hand side. And that may well be that. Kilconley were given the chance by Dunmore. They fluffed their lines. And despite only scoring one point in the second half, the goal that Kilconley got in the last dying moments of normal time has given them a lifeline, but they haven't managed to get the equaliser. Is this it? Is Dunmore's 15-year wait for senior football about to come to an end? The kick out from Conor Gleeson. The referee looks at his watch. He's still blowing on, and the ball is with Dunmore. It looks like he was going to blow the full time. Reddington has the ball. We're still playing in Chung Stadium. Reddington just needs to get this ball to his brother. Damien has it. He needs to just take this ball. He's pushed in the back of free aim, and Dunmore are going to be crowned the champions. But mother of God, have they made hard work of us. Uh, brilliant by uh, Damien Redden in there. He just went down on the ball. He didn't even pick it up and play for the free. Play for the percentages. It doesn't matter if this ball goes over or not. He's, he's going to kill the clock and uh, you know play, play this clock down. But cruel on Kit Connolly. They've had two opportunities to uh, bring this to a replay. But um, in truth, the, uh, Dunmore would look back if they lost this game and say, how did they lose it? Because they own possession. And uh, this free should see them uh, lift the county title. It's with Tariq Costello. If this ball goes dead, it's over. The Dunmores now finally believe. But by golly, have they been put through the ringer. Costello puts it up and over the bar. The referee blows the full-time whistle. Dunmore McHales are the champions. For the third time, they've won the Galway Intermediate Crown. And for 2023, Dunmore are back up in senior football where they feel they belong. Heartbreak for Kilconley. The width of an upright has cost them a replay. And yet Dunmore, on the face of it, you feel deserve this victory. I, I, you know, Dunmore looked like the, the better team, the more quality team there. Uh, they just left Kilconley in the game and Kilconley with great heart and determination that they had almost pulled off a replay. But um, if Dunmore lost this game, they would be kicking themselves for years to come because they'll probably never get an opportunity like that. But that uh, this game is going to bring them young Dunmore guys on a lot. They have some brilliant, brilliant players there. You know, they're a type of team that could stay up and, and, and push on in senior because they're so young and athletic and have players, a balanced team all over. But you have to feel sorry for Kee Conley. You know, they gave it everything. Paul Mannion, that opportunity he had uh, hit the post. And then you had Damien Prindergast as well. Um, you know, you would pick, picture a guy, he'd be the guy you'd want on the ball in the last kick of the game with the form he's been on over the last few years. But, um, you know, he just pulled that score. But um, July the 3rd and more, you know, when you look at all the players that they've had there, Matthew Reddington, captain, he's been playing for five or six years there, uh, you know, knocking on the door, showed great athleticism there. You have to say uh, Shane McGrath as well. I know his, his dad is from Milton, was in, was in my own national school, uh, playing with Dunmore, uh, was absolutely brilliant. He's he's very skillful player. Porrick Castle then as well. And nailed all the frees when it came down to it. And you have to say, uh, uh, Damien Reddington made such a difference when he came on. He just settled down the whole team, won a few frees, won that free near the end, won a few balls, and uh, was probably the difference in the end. Dunmore scored as many points into the wind as with. That was ultimately the winning of this game. Take the late goal that Kilconley got, a bit of a mistake. 
they really did well into that breeze with carrying the ball. The style suited, as you said. They did. They changed the style of play. In the first half, they were going long in, in, into uh, Pore Castillo, but they worked it through the hands in the second half, and there's some very athletic players with, with uh, Matthew uh, Renton and, and Shane Welsh and Dylan Brady and the guys like that that can move. You know, they've real pace, and they worked it through the hands and went right down to the to, to the D area for Kilconley, but you know, we're unfortunate not to get at least uh, one goal in the game. It's hard to think that, that Dunmore didn't get one goal but uh, you know when you look back at it Kilconley scored 1-3 probably not good enough to win uh, any final you know and that goal it was a virtuous goal that they got but um, you know they, they showed great heart and determination and they left it all out in the field but um, probably the, the, the deserve a team won in the end Well the presentation of Man of the Match and the trophy will be made in the next couple of moments I know Jermyth will be picking the Man of the Match with Billy Coss and uh, they'll be making a, a final decision on that in a couple of moments time but I think you've probably already spoken about the contenders for Man of the Match. But in the end, I think Jermyth and his selection of Matthew Reddington, the Damore captain, was there or thereabouts as being just about everyone's choice. Matthew Reddington, the Man of the Match. Congratulations. So not alone is he going to be getting the Cotter Cup as the Intermediate Championship winners. He's also been going to be getting the Man of the Match award. But there were plenty of heroes for Dunmore. Before that, though, a word on Kilconley. What a club. What spirit kept going to the end in a match that, in truth, they were always chasing. And by golly, did they put up a chase? Yeah, they put up a huge chase. And, you know, they showed it against Glenn and Maddie with 13 men, bringing it to extra time and getting to this stage. You know, they did absolutely brilliantly. Um, you know, they never gave up. They fought right to the bitter end. But, um, you know, just fell short. They died with their boots on. You know, P Paul Manu is very unlucky. I feel sorry for him there because that free was a huge, uh, was a pressurised free kick and he did everything right. He was six inches away from, the, from being the hero and bringing this game to extra time. But, um, you know, in, in truth, if Dunmore had lost this, it, it, it would it would be an, a very tough one to take because they played all the football. And when you look through the teams there, bear the... the, 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 the uh, drop that Conor Gleeson did I thought he played well uh, Declan Rattigan uh, at full back came forward I think Dunmore came out in the second half and they came out to win the game they didn't sit back they took the game to, to Kilconley and it started from the full back line Colin Lyons came up the field Danny Ford was marking Paul Mannion did a brilliant job I was watching him he followed him every inch of the pitch and did a very good job on him you know um, uh, Martin Cleary was very good and he was on Nile Daly he was on Nile Daly an Indy County player and did very well on you'd him. have to think he was pretty close to man of the match as he, well he was yeah and I have to say around the middle as well uh, Shane McGrath he's such a classy player he's so balanced on left and right he was just gliding over the ground there you know Dylan Brady kicked a great score Pori Castello so all all across the pitch um, I thought Demore were very very good and the, 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 the majority of the players uh, were on the Demore side today we're going to enjoy these scenes on the pitch in a few moments' time. I'm going to be going down front of camera and we're going to be joined by some of the Dunmore heroes from this victory. So stay tuned to our live stream as we keep bringing you the pictures from the Galway Intermediate Football Final. An incredible decider, such tension, such a way to win it for Dunmore McHales, having seemingly thrown away a winning position. Lady Luck shined on Dunmore and I suppose... Sometimes they say you have to lose one to win one. Maybe today was the perfect example of that, Jeremy. Yeah, and I think this Demore, they're, they're a young team and they've probably had semi-finals uh, and quarter-finals and finals over the last six or seven years with, with good athletic teams. But they just needed to get over the line. And, you know, when you look at uh, the... Uh, the, the Connacht Championship and the All Ireland series, like this team could have a really good cut at it, and you know bring them as a springboard going into senior football. But um, you know the one guy I didn't mention there was going through it was was Jamie Reddington. He only played 30 minutes or 32 minutes. Come on, the start of the second half, they probably played their trump card really early. The management knew they were in a bit of bother, but you know did he deliver? He he, he really did. Uh, be the, was the leader up front there. He won ball. You know you could see by his movement he was creating space for other people, and they just looked like a more composed team when he was on the pitch. He'll certainly enjoy tonight. Damore McHales will enjoy tonight. Fell over the line, maybe, if you want to use that phrase, but it doesn't matter. They're over the line. Yeah, and, and as well, if you think about all the goal chances they missed, if they got one of them, they probably would have won the game easy enough. So, you know, I'm delighted for them now that they've got they finally got over the line. Delighted as well because of the potential for a Demore Milltown clash next season. You know, you've kind of missed those, haven't you, for the last few years? Yeah, absolutely. I, I remember the last time they came up. I think uh, I think you were playing Ali, was it when when, when Demore Milltown played the year after they came up? I think was it? It's, it's a while it was, ago. Yeah, but uh, again, 
just for the more McHales. Now they feel they're going to be rubbing shoulders with the Tune Stars and the Mill Towns and the Curra Fins, you know, and they've mm. got such a long and proud tradition that I'm sure people are sick about hearing about. But look at the more McHales, Jermyn, at underage. And look what they're doing at mm. A-level, at mm. minor, under 19, in the last couple of years. Yeah. This could be a really special few years ahead for Drumore. Yeah, and some intermediate teams come up, and you, you, you know you know, when they win it that they're going to struggle to stay, stay up there. But this Drumore team with the underage uh, players, the pedigree players that they have coming up, you know, these guys could push on and be a strong club going forward in the next five or six years. Jeremy, thanks so much for your work. I know you enjoyed uh, very much uh, covering this intermediate county final. Uh, the Drumore McHale's players are making their way into position. Uh, Kilconley, they look crestfallen, but they can be so proud of their efforts and what they've done this year in the Intermediate Championship. It's time to go for the presentation and I'm sure a really happy to more McHale's captain. I'd like to congratulate both teams for a very tough and competitive intermediate club final here this afternoon. I'd like to show your appreciation to both Kim Connolly and Dunmore McHales. To Kim Connolly, it wasn't your day today, but you, as you have done all year long, you battled on right to the end, and the, the decision was right there, right up to the last minute of the game. So, well done, Kim Connolly, and I'm sure you'll be back here again next year competing for this in this final again. Well done, Kim Connolly. But today is some more McHale's day, and they've been waiting 15 years, they tell me, here to come to collect this trophy here, so we don't want to detain them much longer. But before I do so, I'd like to congratulate our match official, Kieran Quinn, and his officials on a great game today under a very... Uh, very bad weather conditions, very tough conditions for both teams and for the officials. I'd like to thank our sideline officials, our football board officers, and our main sponsor, Peter Curran Electrical. Before I go any further, I want to ask Tom Curran to present the Man of the Match Award to Matthew Reddington.
Statsman, James Henry, Mike Quinn, everyone else that helped them. And the most important man, Fergal. Yeah. Yeah. He made sure every single one of us, he was about 15 of us on the bed before the game today. And he made sure we're all okay. Joseph Kilconley, we know how it feels, and that's all I can say. But look at us now. You, you, it's in you to do next year. Stick together, stick with the management, and give it another crack next year. Round of applause to college. <laughs> Finally, I'd just like to thank you, Stadium, the referees, the stewards, um, and everyone. And finally, last one, our sponsors, Nightfield, Johnny Knight. Unbelievable sponsorship the last couple of years as well. And I'd rather give a shout out, I'll be in trouble. Thanks to our girlfriends, mothers, wives, everyone for sticking up with us the last line. Tomorrow, Here we are in the midst of great celebrations with the Moore McHales. And why wouldn't they on the back of that amazing county final victory? We're live on Galway GA stream and Matthew Rennington, the Demore captain and man of the match, is with me here as well. Uh, Matthew, an incredible victory. Real heartfelt speech there as well. It obviously means so much to you and to this Demore McHales panel to finally get there. Oh, 100%. We've been, I've been playing uh, intermediate now for 10 years, 11 years. And it's, uh, it's so hard to get out of. We tried every year, we thought every year was our year. But um, finally, finally got over the line. We don't do things easy, but it's all worthwhile now. You talk about those nervous last few minutes, just when it looked like he had the hard work done and had moved four points clear. Uh, I'm sure that goal at the end, you were thinking, don't tell me that it's happening again. I know, we, we learned a lot from last year. There's a lot of people saying that we're bottlers and everything. And that, that was all in the back of our heads. The last, the last few minutes, we weren't, we weren't going to let that slip. Everyone in that fucking team knew um, what we were going to do, and we are going to win that game. So uh, we knew we were going to win that game before the ball was even thrown in. So I know the boys, I know the management, we did everything we could do. That's it, we're happy out. There's a lot of Demore people, Matthew, watching in at home that couldn't be here in Tomb Stadium. Abroad, people that have had to immigrate for whatever reason. I'm sure you have a message for them looking in today at this amazing day for the club. I'd say book your flights and come home because there's going to be a party in Demore for a week or two. Well that's for sure. That's well done, sure. Matthew. Congratulations to you. We might send up our, our team manager, Dennis Fallon, or one of the lads from the uh, management team as well. Extraordinary scenes here in Tomb Stadium, as you can see behind me as well. The, what this means to the people of Dunmore, I'd imagine it would be something similar had Kilconley gotten over the line, but how close we were to that match finishing in a draw at the end. Had that shot from Paul Mannion come inside the post rather than outside as well. We will try and get a member of the Dunmore management up to us as well, if we can, in the few seconds there as well. Uh, a tremendous victory uh, for the club as well. In fact, I may go down, if that's okay, with Dermot, my cameraman, who's going to follow me down the pitch as we go pitch side to try and get some of the... Uh, Gary Delaney joins me first, who, uh, as he did in his playing career, has plenty of pace to get up here as well. <laughs> Gary, congratulations. We're live on Galway GA TV as well. A um, lot, of, lot of support coming in from Dermore all around the world. Um, your second year with the team. Last year's heartbreak, how much of a motivation was it for this group? Oh, it was huge. Like, from, from when we met in February, we spoke about it and... You know, uh, journalists and people around the, the country are putting pressure on us, but we put pressure on ourselves to get back here today. Um, and we put pressure on ourselves in the game as well. It should have been out of size, and Kilconley had their chances. It was a roller coaster of a game, but I'm just delighted we got over. The, the boys have put so much work in. It's just unbelievable. Like. It is just about getting over the line, isn't it? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah. like last year's final, I know yourself, you said a couple of occasions that we butchered it. I just thought our inexperience on the day really set us back and it just showed there today how, how to see out the game you know and I think last year Stutch was really really well today do you know what I mean so everything happens for a reason and, and you know we're, 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 gone, we're gone senior I suppose you know it's a, it's a tremendous achievement the word we kept using in the commentary today was composure these young lads the Murrays the Mitchells young McGrath but they were 
happy to get on the ball in what was a really tough day. I don't think people realised how bad the conditions were. Yeah, no, and we spoke about that last year. Uh, like, uh, we, we in meetings, there were people, I, I felt people in, in the county final last year went missing and they didn't want to get on the ball and they were afraid to make mistakes. So I just said to them, we have to be afraid to make a mistake. Don't be afraid to get on the ball. Express yourselves. And all year, they, they're just the hunger to get on the ball and to make the right decisions and to do the right things has been amazing, you know. It was always going to be an arm wrestle with Kilconley. For 58 minutes, you were so composed and in control of that game. And then, I'm sure you were thinking when the goal went in, uh, one of those freakish things. Yeah, I know. And, and last year came into mind, I think, I think on the 56th minute last year, we conceded that goal to Littermore. And it was the 58th minute this year. And I was like, oh no, not again, you know. Because in fairness, if they kicked the points to level it, I, I think they would have had all the momentum going into extra time, maybe, you know. So, look, like... Everyone to a man was excellent, you know. Um, and just the boys that came in just did their jobs and it was really, really good. I'm just so delighted for them, you know, the, the work that goes on behind the scenes, the, the underage structures in place. You know, I think it's the right time for Dumour to, to make a pop at senior, you know. That's a very valid point that we were talking about, the success that Dumour have at A level, even Dumour Community School beating Jarlets. Unheard of stuff going on at the moment at underage with, with Dunmore. Yeah, it's really good, like, to have under 15A, 17A... Uh, 19A, so what's coming is, is, is phenomenal, you know, and it, if we can get to a stage where we can get one or two players every year, you know, like this year, uh, like Luke Murray wasn't involved last year, he came up from, from the under-19 grade, you know, Connor Nocton, two or three boys like that every year, and they'll add so much to it, you know, and it's, it's, it's a tribute to the boys today, you know, the, all their hard work, and I'm just delighted for them, to, to be honest. I know you're going to say it was a management team, but on a personal level, Gary, how much satisfaction do you get out of this? Because coaching in another club, uh, you know, it's not easy. You've got to integrate yourself with the community and with the club and the officers and the players. How satisfied are you right now? Yeah, I'm, 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 pretty, I'm pretty happy, to be honest. Um, uh, like, as a player... Um, you know, when you're when you're playing, you want to win, and as a coach, I want to win as well. You know, so um, I don't want to be one of these guys that's going to a club and not achieving success. You know, and I know it's not all about success, but you know, even getting them to the final last year was a step. You know what I mean? And I feel that when you're coaching teams, if you can get them to the next step, you've done your you've done your job to the best of your ability. Do you know what I mean? So, look, I think we're in a good place. I think we're in a good spot to to play senior next year, and. Uh, yeah, look, I haven't even thought, I don't even know who we're playing the next round, you know, so it's, it's just, it's mad. So I'm, I'm off to the Canary Islands tomorrow morning, so... Um, You'll enjoy that trip. Yeah, I'll enjoy that. My wife and three kids flew out today, so they're actually flying out. They don't know what the score was or anything, but uh, I'm, I'm flying out there to, to meet them tomorrow, so... I can tell you it's St. Malash from Sligo. They're the team that won the Intermediate Championship. Okay. Okay. That's in a couple of weeks' time. You won't worry about that no, tonight. No, no. But would you like to see this group have a run at the Connacht Club Championship? Well, from where I come from, and we always said is, you know, why not? You know, you're not representing Dunmore anymore, you're now representing Galway, you know. And these little carrots and nuggets, they don't come around that often, you know what I mean? Like, if they're being dangled in front of your face, you know, I think you should, should have a go at them, you know. Like, enjoy the next few days, but I'll be telling the boys, like, let's have a go, you know. Because opportunities like this don't come around, you know. I know I had loads of them, and, but, like, for clubs around the, the, the county... They're, they're very minimum, you know. The, the last time Dumour were in a kind of championship was win, you know. 2004, so 2004, 18 years on. 18 years ago. So, like, as I said, it doesn't come around often, so I'd definitely be having a crack at it. I think this portion of the interview is going to be played back to Dumour McHale's players just to take that sort of inspiration. Gary Delaney, congratulations. Right. It's a magnificent Thanks achievement. For Thanks for everything. There he is, Gary Delaney, the current Finn man who won it all as a player and now as a coach. He's led Dumour McHale's back to the promised land. A promised land that, as you can see behind me, on the famous sward of Tume Stadium, where so many great Demore McHale's players enjoyed so much success back over the years. Now it's the current crop who are delighted to be back in senior football. The intermediate champions are Demore McHale's. Thanks so much for watching.